This video is for determining the epicenter of an earthquake, and as an example, I take an earthquake from just a couple of days ago. Today is June 1st, 2021, so this is from May 30th, 2021, and it's the Chickaloon earthquake, about 6.1 on the Richter scale. And yes, the epicenter is on the map. That's because a computer generated it, and very quickly, within just a few minutes, they had that at, this is the United States Geological Survey um, website, and I'm down here in Soldotna, and I felt it pretty much shaking for half a minute or so, and was sitting in my camper, and my family in the house also noticed it. So, anyway, let me just show you this, this map quickly. So, what we see here is what, besides the epicenter, we see all these little squares. These are actually people who reported that they felt the earthquake and what they reported, and then you would have to click on it and, and figure that actually out. We can nicely see the Anchorage Palma Wasilla area here. We can see Fairbanks over here, and here we can see the nice stretch on the Sterling Highway from Nikiski down to Homer. And then even such areas, this is the Bethel area over here, and this is the Kotzebue area over here. Even there was someone who felt it and reported it. All right, there are also some rings here. These are the Macaulay scale. And which is the effect that the earthquake have on, on these rings, and you have to read up on that, what that is. In any case, what this video is going to be about is how to actually determine the epicenter by taking measurements, because someone needs to be able to figure it out. Yes, it's a computer, but somebody needs to program the computer based on the data that are available. And that's what I'm going to show, the data that will be available. First of all, here's another map of, of the area. So this is Chickaloon. So this is where the earthquake originated. And again, we have the Anchorage area here. This is where I live, Soldatna, and so on. Okay, so I made a search for what is called the PS travel times for the PNS waves, pri premier, primary and secondary, respectively pressure and shear waves. And this is, I found this one, this is actually on the iris website this is really nice this little video because he shows nicely this is what's happening you get three waves or even more waves from the earthquake one of them is the pressure wave that arrives first it goes through the body of the earth and then there's the s wave that also goes to the body of of the earth but one of them is a pressure wave the other one is a shear wave and eventually you get the surface surface wave and that's actually usually the most destructive one it does peter the surface wave does peter out with distance relatively quickly that's why you only have destruction right next to the earthquake while the p and the s waves they actually can travel um, through the entire earth we see the distances here like 2000 4000 6000 kilometers we see different curves here and these curves here they are their arrival times at certain distances so the pressure wave is the fastest one the s wave is slower and the surface waves take even longer again the intensity actually diminishes quite a bit with distance what he shows here in this particular diagram really nicely is that he has a little seismogram here so this is where the p waves arrives this is where the s wave arrives and then the surface waves and pretty much what he does is he determines the distance or the time difference from here to here which is this one here he turned this around in his little video and put that on the scale here for the time difference between p and s wave and then associates it and there's only one difference possible between p and s wave and that then would match apparently i think that is about 2500 kilometers for this particular example now i tried to find p and s wave diagrams and here they are they're kind of all over the place um, but i couldn't find them for short distances because i'm only in alaska and i only have those few stations here but instead i found this one here where someone already put it together for short distances we see here three four five hundred kilometers and then the times here 30 40 50 60 seconds between these two so these are already subtracted here so that's the difference between the p and the s wave somebody already did that okay let's go to the oh let's go to the method actually first there we go this is the, actually the method you wouldn't know where the earthquake is, but you take these seismograms at these particular seismograph stations where you have the seismometers, and you have certain travel times. 
that you measure between the P and the S wave. And from that you compute, this is the distance it should be, but you don't know in which direction. So you make a certain circle around this one, and around this one, and around this one, and when you make three circles, they cross in one exact place, that's where the earthquake originated, that's where the epicenter is. Now, three circles do not have to exactly cross in one place, but if you do the signs right here with the data, these have to, and if you put a fourth circle and you're from yet another seismograph station, it also would cut right here. Now, what I'm going to do these circles, and that's what the method is going to be, finding that epicenter by using these three circles. When I'm going to do that, I'm going to use real data, and the real data have some error attached to it, which means we're, we're not going to get a particular one point, but we're going to get an area, and you'll see it's really close to what they already showed us. So here are the three stations that I chose. By the way, there are dozens here. Um, I tried to choose some stations that are quite a bit away from the alleged epicenter in three directions so that I get nice circles. So with the knowledge of where it ought to be, um, that's how I chose them. So College Outpost, that's near Fairbanks. And here's the P wave, here's the S wave, and I think we can see a little bit green shading here. I think that's probably the error bar that they put in here. And the seismologists, they must know that, hey, the S wave starts exactly here. Um, and then the difference in time here is approximately 30 seconds. So the S wave arrives 30 seconds after the P wave in Fairbanks College Outpost. This one here is, I'm going to scroll a little bit up, Dawson in the Yukon Territory. And notice this already further away. We can see that here the difference is basically 50 seconds between the two. So the S wave after the P wave. I don't know how seismologists themselves figured that this is the beginning and not over here. But they know, well, part of it is actually in that they have more than one seismogram. This one is a primary uh, pressure wave, this is a shear wave, so they give different prints on different seismographs. That's probably the reason. So that's the second one, Dawson, Yukon ter Territory, and the third one is near me, Skilak Lake. That's not very far from here. Um, so here we have the pressure wave and the, the, uh, and the shear wave, and here we have a difference of, I want to say, about 25 seconds. So, I'm going to keep those in mind. And I'm just going to go back to the chart because I forgot to point something out here on, on this little chart. And so here we have Anchorage. This is the alleged epicenter. And notice where these three lakes are over here, uh, north of the Chugach Mountains. And then it's kind of like east of Wasilla and Palma. Denali, by the way, is approximately over here. The, oh, there it is. There's formerly Mount McKinley. All right, so keep this map in mind because that's the one I'm going to use in a moment to analyze the data. All right, so these are the three stations here. These are the times that I measured on these seismograms. These are the distances that I got from looking at that P minus S wave diagram. Let me see if I can get that back. Let's see, which one was it? It was this one here. So this is where I associate 30 seconds with 300 kilometers, 50 seconds with 500 kilometers, 25 seconds off the chart, but I can see that here if I go down here that I must go a little bit to the left, so 250 kilometers. That's how I came up with these numbers here. The Google map that I got is in miles, so I just divide it by 1.6. 300 divided by 1.6 is a little bit less than 200, but notice that I use ballpark figures here. And I'm just looking at, you know, the closest 5 seconds or so, 30, 50, 25 seconds. So whatever I have in kilometers or miles cannot be more accurate than my time measurement. So I have to deal with 200. You know, I divide by 1.6, round to 200. I divide 500 by 1.6, round to 300. And the same thing with 250, 250 miles. Then on the map, you will see that there's a scale of 0.5 centimeters to 10 miles. Actually, there isn't even centimeters on there. It's just units on that map that I'm going to use. Um, in any case, so the circles that I have are for college, 10 centimeters on the map, 
15 centimeters for Dawson and 7.5 centimeters for Skeelock. So let's go to the map. There it is. That's the same map that I used earlier. And remember that the epicenter should be approximately here. Okay, I'm choosing three um, seismogram stations. One of them is near Skeelock Lake, approximately there. Another one is near Dawson City. There it is. And a third one is near Fairbanks, or pretty much Fairbanks. So there it is. These are the two, three dots that I have. Okay, then I'm going to put this one down here. As I said, when you, there's a 50 mile here and it says 2.5 centimeters, so 0.5 centimeters for 10 miles. I'm going to put that on Fairbanks and we'll draw a circle with a radius of 10 centimeters. Unfortunately, in this particular software that I'm, this is the SmartBoard software that I'm using, it doesn't show the center of the circle anymore. So I have to make sure that I draw this accurately. I'm going to shift the, let's do this one here, ski lag next. I'm going to shift my ruler here. So ski lag lake would have a distance of 7.5 centimeters a radius circle there we go and now these two already overlap in two places so here and here but the epicenter must be in one or the other but also remember that these are not the exact points because there's a lot of rounding going on in here so we're going to come up only with an approximate um, result by the way it wouldn't do me any good if i had chosen my third station to decide between this one and this one here, I have to have a th third station. If I had chosen it somewhere here, because then I get a circle that are kind of around here. So that's why I chose something that is yet in a different place. And that's why I chose Dawson. Technically, somebody could say, hey, choose something over here. But in any case, so I got this one here. And this one has a radius of 15 centimeter. And we can more or less nicely see that this one here is ruled out. Yes, we have an overlap over here and one here and here a couple. This one here is ruled out as well, but it should be over here. And again, it's not in the exact one spot, but a little bit of an area because the method that I used is rather rudimentary. Um, so it's kind of like in this area. And again, if we look back at the map earlier, yes, that's where actually Chickaloon is. And that's how you determine the epicenter if you didn't have a computer and if you do have a computer which of course obviously geologists do seismologists of course somebody has to program it with the same kind of method by the way looking at the seismograms and the computer does that pretty much automatically as i said they have those data within just a few minutes so anyway that's it figuring out the epicenter of an earthquake